Hey folks, Andrew here. This week, I'm going to share with you how I've had almost zero vacancy in my short term rentals. And that's even with COVID-19 happening. And I'm going to share my pricing strategy where I list my units to find amazing tenants. And at the end, I'll give you a tour of our short term rental. Uh -huh. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. I always appreciate you being here. My goal really is with this channel is to help you create multiple income streams so you can build long-term wealth, have less financial stress, and basically spend more time doing what you love. Now for today's episode, since we just had a tenant move out of our short-term rental, I thought it'd be a great time to give you a tour. So be sure to stick around to the end so you can see it. And then I also wanted to share with you where we find great tenants, my pricing strategy for the unit. And then the idea with sharing these is if you like them, I want you to steal them, make them your own and use them so you can get started with the short term rental. Or if you already have a short term rental, you can use these as great best practices. And to give you a little bit of background, this building was actually my third house hack. And my wife and I lived there for almost three years. And when we bought the building, it was in pretty bad shape. It was this old 1920s corner store that had not been renovated in almost 30 years. That was on top of it being almost 100 years old. Plus it had this weird detached garage barn building, which you'll see at the end. But the building itself, the roof was shot, the siding was rotted, the electrical was not working, the sewer line had multiple breaks in it. It was just a complete mess. So when we bought it, we gutted it to the studs and gave it a full renovation. And during that process, we converted the main building into three higher end apartments. And then that sort of weird detached building is what we made into the one car garage and two story guest house. And then what we did is my wife and I lived in the upstairs of the main building. And then the two apartments downstairs, we rented those out and those actually covered our entire mortgage. And then when we had family and friends come into town, they could stay in that guest house. And then in between, we'd rent it on Airbnb or VRBO. That property was an absolutely great house hack. It let us live for free for almost three years. Now, if you want more info on that whole story, I've got a really great write up on my blog and I'll drop a link in the comments down below for you. Now, after we moved out of the building, what we did is we converted that guest house to start renting to travel nurses. Now for me, a traveling nurse is the ideal short term rental tenant because of four reasons. You know, the first is they already get a background screening done on them by their employers because they're a nurse and they're going to be licensed by the state. Now I still do my own screening on top of that, but it's a great filter and lets you know you're going to get good quality prospective tenants. Then number two, their contracts tend to be for 10 weeks to a year versus, you know, the average Airbnb stay was only three or four nights. That means lower vacancy, which means fewer turnover costs. And in the end, that means more money. And that's what this is really about. Third is they get paid well. And I mean, really well. And that helps me sleep better at night as a landlord, because I know there's a higher likelihood that they're going to be able to pay their rent every month. And then the fourth reason is they work a lot. And when they're not working because they're a travel nurse, they're out exploring the city. And this leaves very little wear and tear on the rental. All right, now you might be asking, where can I find these amazing travel nurse tenants? And it's really easy. I listed my short term rental on the site called Furnished Finder. And as the name suggests, it's set up to help people find furnished rentals and it's predominantly used by traveling nurses looking for places to stay. Now let's get on to my pricing strategy. And in reality, I could actually spend a whole video talking about doing a rental analysis and how to price a unit, but I'm just going to cut to the chase. Here's my oversimplified strategy. Price your unit equal to the competition or slightly under and provide a equal or slightly better product. And this creates this nice gap there. And by doing this, you should be able to rent your units quicker and you should have less turnover. Now, just as an example with my unit, when I used rent a meter and I checked what studio apartments rent for, the median rent was about 850 a month. Now, being that this was going to be furnished and include some utilities like water and basic internet, 
I probably could have rented it for nine, nine fifty, maybe just add a thousand dollars a month when you looked at what the median was. Now, when you price a rental compared to what the median is, you need to be realistic about any negatives your units have. So while our property is in a great location, what you'll see in a bit with the tour is it doesn't have a traditional stove and it only has what some call a three quarters bathroom. There's no tub, just a square shower. But then by the way, we renovated the unit and the decor, it really helps it make it stand out from the competition. So when I sort of factored in all of those things, I targeted the price at $900 a month. I probably could have squeezed a little more rent out of it, but at this point in my life, I'd rather have lots of competition for it and have it rent really quickly than try to pick up those few extra bucks. And just to give you an idea of how successful the strategy was, our first travel nurse was in there for four months. And before she moved out, we already had signed leases and deposits collected on the next two tenants. One will be staying for two months, and the one after that is gonna be staying for 10 months. You actually ready to go check out the place? Well, cool. before we head out there, what I want you to do is smash that like button for me. All right, cool. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and see you guys out there in just a second. All right, we're out here on site at the guest house furnished rental that we have. And as you can tell, I'm already sweating through my shirt because it is August in New Orleans and the heat and humidity is just roasting. So one car studio style detached building. Come on in and let's check it out. Don't look at my password. Hey folks, so this is the little courtyard area that we have out back. It's a nice little entryway to get into the guest house, which is this building right here. But it's a little private area for folks to hang out, have drinks at night before they go out, have their coffee in the morning when it's nice out. So let's check out the garage over here. All right, folks, here's the garage. Nothing too fancy. One car garage. It's nice to be able to have for folks that want off street parking, want to be able to lock up their car. Then we added the washer and dryer. Lots of extra storage space, which folks always love. I'm absolutely dying, I'm sweating. Let's head inside where it's nice and cool. All right, folks, so here's the downstairs of the two-story guest house. As you can see, we got a little kitchenette area, coffee maker, sink, toaster oven. We got hot plate up here they can pull down if they want it. Little half mini fridge. And then we actually added a three-quarter size fridge over here. Now, this is one of the downsides to the units. And when I do the marketing for it, I'm very upfront about it is, it's not a full-size kitchen and there's no stove and oven. While we've got the toaster oven and the hot plate, for someone that really likes to cook or a lot likes a really big kitchen, this isn't gonna be a good rental for them. So I like to be up front, and I found by putting that up front and then pricing it right, plus the way we decorate the upstairs, as you'll see in a minute, it's not really an issue for us. Especially being here in New Orleans, folks like to get out and actually enjoy the food, see the culture, so they're not cooking a ton of meals at home. And then a lot of times the travel nurses are at a hospital that has a cafeteria, so they're eating a lot of their meals there as well. So let's go check out the upstairs. All right, welcome to the upstairs. One of the things I think was with this property, a lot of people overlooked it because there wasn't a clear way to get upstairs. There's this old tiny rickety staircase that they had, and if you were to try to build a staircase to code, you would have lost all of the space going back into the garage. And what I was able to do is actually look at the building code and realize we could build a spiral staircase. And that staircase helped get us access to the upstairs. And you can see right here, we put a nice little sitting eating area. So it's a good way to sort of maximize this space. It's not the most ideal use of stuff, but it ends up working out pretty well. Let's check out the rest of it. All right. So give you a little bit more perspective of the upstairs here. What we did is it's a nice big studio space. We tried to make a desk area for folks that wanted to do some work. Then on the other side, you got a nice little sit-in area right up next to the bed, ultra comfortable bed, really nice furnished and decorated. We got this interesting thing here. What this is, is just in a little extra clothes hanger. You know, everyone loves more storage and the more places you can have, to hang things. So we got that little space over there. We got the nice big dresser, silver dresser over here. And as you'll see in a minute, we got a little closet, um, makeshift Ikea type thing uh, over in the corner to help maximize the space. 
All right, so here we are at the other corner of the room. My wife found this on Ikea or Wayfair, little storage space, you know, it has some nice drawers, room for extra linen, a lot of clothes hangers, ironing board, just enough to help uh, if a travel nurse is coming in. It works really well for that sort of three month to six month period. And also I think this only set us back like 120 bucks. Pretty easy and cheap. Now one of the things I really love up here is, you'll see the pictures, these giant weird barn door thingies. And what we did is we put in these double French doors and it's a really nice Juliet balcony with the railing. Right now in the summer in New Orleans, it's pretty miserable having them open. But in the fall and winter and early spring when it's nice and cooler out, having these double doors open is really cool up here. Awesome, thanks for joining me out here at the guest house tour. I hope you learned a bit about how you can price your properties. And if you do furnished rentals, what you should think about when you're decorating. All in, I think we spent about $3,500 with the decorations, the bedding, the furniture, and we've easily made that money back over the time period. So without further ado, here's a quick final tour of the whole property.